for young, for women in the village outside. And throughout my time, just so confronted by my own weakness. Like, we had these security guards who rode mo motorcycles around to like alert us of different things or, or to give a message or something. But oftentimes when the motorcycle came around to our house, it was calling for me because someone was at the gate sick or injured, they would gotten into some accident or something. And I didn't want to go. I was, I had such a bad attitude. Like the, the security guards knew too. They're like, someone's here. And I was like, okay. Like interrupted from my own thing that I was doing. And I felt so inadequate because I didn't know how to be a nurse. So I was just, oh, I just can't do it. But time after time, you know, sometimes it was still hard when I got to the clinic and saw the person and I was like, I don't really know what to do. But there were many times where that was a place of deep encounter between me and this person, not on a, you know, not because I had great sage medical advice, but because I just went. I often felt like in that story of like <clears throat> Jesus as tells the story of like the two sons and he's like, which one did the Lord's will? The one who said he was going to do it and didn't, or the one who did it, and, or said he wouldn't and did it. It's like always the one who kind of like said I, I wouldn't, but like when I went, the Lord met me there in my weakness and provided for me. <coughs> with the women's group, the Bible study, I was so frustrated with them because they were so uncommitted to it. Mm -hmm. and. I, you know, had my certain amount of time that I was planning on spending in Mohogwai, the village. And like, oh, they're not coming. I have to literally go to each of their houses and like gather them and be like, we're having Bible study like we do every week, you know, at this time at the church. So anyways, very frustrating experience and very aware of my impatience. You know, I'm like, some people that I would talk to, like, that's so beautiful that you go and gather them in I'm like it's not beautiful it's really annoying <laughs> um, so then I, I had this experience where uh, we decided to do a consecration to Mary with our, our women's group by the suggestion of another missionary because I was just expressing my like deep frustration she's like what if you I have these books you could do the 33 days you know consecration so we decided to do it and it was amazing the transformation of just going. I decided also to like go to the women's house and and have them prepare like a meal or a snack or something. And so it was it was going really well. <clears throat> and at the end, we decided to go to into the town, into the church, and have mass and like do our consecration, make kind of a thing of it. So I get this call from a woman who had not been coming to Bible study and who had not been doing the consecration. She says, oh, I hear you're going into the town to have dinner. And I was like, I played dumb because I was still like frustration and you know, like you haven't been coming. So I was like, um, what? Like, I don't know what you're talking about. She's like, oh, well, Eric told me you're like, going into Trujillo tonight and I was like oh yeah we're going to mass because we're like finishing the consecration but I mean you didn't do it so it wouldn't really make sense for you to like come celebrate with us anyway so she's like oh yeah you're right you're right and then I felt horrible and I'm like but it's mass like come it'll be great we're meeting at this place but she didn't come so then Fast forward to the end of the, my time in Honduras, they, they had this celebration for us and um, were honoring us as missionaries. And this woman told this story that I had, we had had this phone conversation and I was like, wow, oh, really would have been fine if you had just been like, thanks for coming, thanks for all your work. But she tells this like, you know, really low moment in my time as a missionary and I'm like, Oh, this is getting awkward. I'm feeling very warm, warmer than I normally do. And but then she gets to the end and she's like, Yeah, so I hung up the phone and I realized I want to be there. I want to be part of this group. Why am I not going? Why am I not doing this? 
and uh, she started to come and I I remembered like after that point she started to come to the group and she started to be very involved and host and make snacks for us and like just so beautiful so that was just kind of a, a micro event of like my my whole experience as a missionary and the Lord's coming into my deep weakness, woundedness, bitterness, and bringing forth his abundance. So kind of in the way that Pierre was talking about that, like it just, he just comes sometimes. You know, like in the midst of our, our weakness, um, he just comes. So I guess what I want to leave you with is that, yes, there's like, there's work to be done. We, we want to draw close to the Lord, but ultimately, He loves us so deeply and He wants to come to us and He wants us to rest on His heart. He wants us to encounter His heart in adoration. <clears throat> so don't be discouraged because sometimes when I think about poverty, simplicity, generosity, I get very discouraged. Um, but it's the Lord's work in our life that's going to actually transform us. It's not our striving that's going to transform. So.